all they have done is taken one of these drugs. And the second cause of intrahepatic biliary obstruction is, and we are back to square one again, viral hepatitis. Viral hepatitis causes hepatocellular jaundice. But in some people, for some reason, instead of doing that, it produces a picture very much like biliary obstruction with itching and obstructive jaundice. So viruses of hepatitis can cause biliary obstruction in some people for some reason. So that's the snag. The examiner will come back to you now and say, tell me about the two others that you've ruled out. Tell me a little bit about hemolytic jaundice. In your own words, very briefly. You tell the examiner that is just excessive breakdown of red blood cells. Because bilirubin, as we've discussed earlier on, the name we give to this yellow stuff, comes largely from breakdown of red cells and that of Hemoglobin. Hemolytic jaundice is never severe. Hemolytic jaundice is always mild. Patients are not deeply jaundiced. What they do have is signs and symptoms of anemia. And if you were to check the liver function, that would be entirely normal. The problem is that the liver is overloaded with breakdown of bilirubin. So it tries to conjugate as much of it as it can, and it succeeds, and we are very grateful to it. But some of it remains unconjugated. And if you were to check and examine the abdomen, you will notice that the structure in the left hypochondrium, the left upper abdomen, spleen is often enlarged, a condition we refer to as splenomegaly an enlarged spleen. And so it turns out that if you were producing enormous amount of bilirubin due to red cell breakdown, the liver cannot cope and therefore tries to excrete as much of it as it can. And it's a significant fact that patients who are hemolyzing actually form gallstones, which can obstruct the biliary. So you get grafted on signs and symptoms.